You know, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Because we, um, especially as a result of our families, we live in the real world. Which I, I, I mean it since, I mean it as a joke, but I also mean it sincerely. Because someone in chat just said, I wish all old people were like this, which is a great comment. And it's nice to hear. But at the same time, I, I sometimes get into arguments with my chat because I'm like, you guys wouldn't know, but we're really like not that old. If you step outside of the confines of your home, there's like some real old people out there. Yeah, and I think like <laughs> if you were to line up 20, 40 year old dudes, we're probably at the end of like the, the jail lineup as being the most relatable. Absolutely. Right? I have to imagine. Because <laughs> streamers are the only people I really talk to, but... Why is everyone saying copium, though? But I'm serious. It's like, if we put the average 40-year-old on stream, he'd be like, why are you talking about Costco and IRAs, you know? Yeah, he'd be like, what the heck is Skibbity Riz? 40-year-old normies, yeah. Well, I'm also, uh, I'm not 40. I'm 35, so... That's kind of wild that you're 35. Kind of crazy, right? I definitely, like, I, I wouldn't say I... Oh, there's two lads down here. Let's murk them and then talk about our feelings. They've, they've, they're glinting. They've run to the boathouse, tapped one for 105 because I'm built different. No, I, th I think if, if, if you had sniper cover, we win that fight. Yeah, those guys are 40 for sure. <laughs> but I think I, I don't feel old. Like, when people talk about being old, it's always, like, 27-year-olds who are like, oh, my knees hurt. Like, I, I've started to look at my life and be like, the world that existed when I was a child is not there anymore. Like, when, whenever I tell a story, people are like, damn, you're old. I'm like, well, 1996, when Jerry Maguire really came out, all the video stores were like wall-to-wall -wall Jerry Maguire. And then, like, 20-year-olds are like... Brother, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Jerry Maguire, Blockbuster, like this this stuff doesn't exist anymore. You were you were having lunch in the Zellers restaurant? What the heck is Zellers? If you could bring it back for 24 hours, how would you spend the 24 hours in the 90s? I would probably eat like a well, can I bring like my wallet back with me? Yeah. I would eat like a, I would probably eat 20 dinners. Can you imagine going out to eat? With 20, 24 bucks in your pocket at 1996 prices. Oh, <laughs> dude, I'm, give me one of each. Where would you go, though? The keg? I, I, I would hit places that don't even exist anymore. Take me to Subway before they started cutting through the side of the bread when they still did the gouge cut through the top. What do you mean cutting through the side of the bread? You know, like at Subway now, they slice through like the, the equator of the bread. Like the way that yeah. you would do it at home. And then yeah. they used to, in the 90s and the early 2000s, they used to do a gouge cut at Subway where they cut out like a little tunnel in the top of the bread and then they filled the ingredients in and then they put the little bread yep. wedge back on top. I forgot about that. The wedge cut, man. Yo, hear me out. What about going to McDonald's and getting everything in white foam containers? Oh, dude, they didn't care at <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> it just tasted better, man. Then you get a glass bottle of Gatorade. It oh, just tastes better man. in the glass. Why did they get away from glass? It's just did, sand. I think it's expensive. Didn't they? Yeah, have, but it's, well, like they had, they had like you're a little bit older than me. Not to put you on the spot, they had glass at McDonald's when you were a kid. No, no, <laughs> that, is, that seems insane to me. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> glass. If you were to get Gatorade when I was like probably early grade school. Mm, okay. It was in glass. Really? And like you would get 12 glass bottles of Gatorade? No, you get like one. Okay. They didn't, they didn't sell 12 packs back then. People weren't as thirsty back then. So you so you would spend all your, your time going to 90s restaurants? I don't know if I'd spend all my time, but that'd be like the start. I also just, would, I, I know this is like, and I, I hate to bring it up because I know you're going to agree. It would be better if you disagreed and we could get some conversation, but like, I feel like social media kind of like irreparably cooked the world to some extent. I think that just being back in 1996 and like wanting, like feeling my brain be like, I want to be mad about something. And then like having no outlet to actually get mad at except like the newspaper would be really refreshing. Yo, let me, let me welcome you to something. Okay. okay and, yeah. and, and I, I never, I never ask anyone to do this, but you got to see it to believe it. Um, oh, hold on. I left it upstairs. Cover me. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna bring back his light phone. 
Here comes the light phone. Um, they, I've, I've seen Dan talk about his light phone before. Uh, before. Sorry, I became Colin Farrell for a second there. I think it's one step too far for me, um, but I'm, I'm eager to hear his thoughts nonetheless. All right, you brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I, I don't. I'm not asking this for views. I'm asking this for your for your own pleasure. If you're at, it, switch over to my my stream for a second. Okay. I'm gonna show Ryan talked about going back to the '90s. No social media. I'm holding you holding up the ticket to the <laughs> '90s right here. What I'm holding is a phone that only has three things on it. Phone, alarm, and settings. Yes, this is real. It's not a glitch. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this, Ryan. As yeah. You could call me a boomer. You could call me whatever you call me late for supper. But you know how you said, like, hey, I need something to be mad about? Yeah, yeah. You don't have the option anymore. No. Now it's like, that's out of my pocket. Like, I don't even worry about social media. I worry about nothing. Because all I got is a little, little tiny phone in my pocket. I do have a question about the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, because it has no apps, what does settings yeah. do? Like, what settings for what? <laughs> for like, brightness, I guess? The set, there's a, uh, you can go dark mode. Okay, yeah. You can That's go, important. like, arm, army time if you prefer. So, it's really, like, Palm Pilot 1998. Like, you would go uh, into the settings menu and you'd be like, holy cow, they've got a world clock in this. Yeah, I mean, there's probably three settings on the phone. That is crazy. But I, 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 I'm happy for you. Don't get me wrong. I did see the ad you played for it where the dude showed you how easy it was to get an Uber. And it was him. He had to call a phone number for Uber and then be like, hey, can I get an Uber to this address to this place? And then I guess like someone on the other line like puts it into the app or something. I don't know. So I will say this was a caveat because with my cell phone plan, I, did, I didn't know, but it was nice. So like I was able to add it for free. So I have like a okay. new phone number. But if I travel, I bring my iPhone with me because it would be like you yeah. would have to be hooked to try and travel with just that. I mean, imagine just scrolling through the, the settings menu for like a five hour flight. <laughs> military time, 12 hour clock, military time, 12 hour clock. And it, it's, it just comes from like when I spent those three weeks in Scotland. I didn't have a cell phone. And yeah. I'm like, well, this, this was really, really fun and amazing. So why not try and recreate as much of it without being a negligent parent as possible? You know? <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> but I do think I, don't, I, I would say like for the normie person like myself, it would be nearly impossible to go light phone only. Yeah, you know? I mean, like you, you're giving up a lot. As much as people are like the phones are ruining society. It is nice to like not have to drive to the airport to buy a plane ticket. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of positivity that's come as well, I would say. But it's, I think it's like the internet's great. It's, it's just social media is like, are you, let me give you an example. I, I wake up in the morning, you know, post a TikTok, go to Twitter. And like the first thing I see is just like, um, I, for some reason, I think that uh, Twitter thinks like I'm part of some male versus female war on society. So I'm constantly seeing like posts from influencer dudes that are like, you know, women are cooked and then posts replying to it from influencer women who are like, no, actually men are cooked. And I'm like, you guys realize that you're destroying society, right? Like every day you wake up and you're like, I'm going to erode the fabric of, of modern life. That's what you, like, you're, you're going to die and, and St. Peter's going to be like, it was actually like a net negative on the world. Well, it's just, and, and you know, when there was like the first uh, wave of payments came out for Twitter Blue subscribers and people were like, holy cow, I just got paid like 3,500 bucks for the two weeks on X. I was like, oh, I get it now. They're hustling. But now that like the payments are like $17 bi-weekly, I'm like, you're literally like, you're like a, a, a surf in the culture war. Like, what are you doing? Nobody's winning. You're like Sir, like <laughs> like a, a peasant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who do you think you follow on Twitter where the algorithm bleeds into you? I think probably I, I, I think I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to the algorithm sometimes. I'll see a tweet that's so stupid that's like I gotta <laughs> click on this and see what this person's all about. Then uh, there's it soaks it up. immediately it's like when you buy something on Amazon. And Jeff Bezos is like, well, if you like that fridge filter you just bought, maybe you'd be interested in buying another fridge filter. I will say, I go to Dairy Queen with my daughter like once a week. 
and I get a snack-sized blizzard, and I've been mixing it up, so I think I've, I'm, I'm like four blizzards deep, okay? Reese's Pieces Blizzard, 8 out of 10. Greatly enjoyed it. Something about the peanut butter that they put in the Reese's, or not Reese's Pieces, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, they, they, the peanut butter in them hits different. I wouldn't spread it on my toast, but it's incredible peanut butter, okay? Uh, we had Oreos. I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. The problem for me, I like Oreo. Oreo is a good cookie, but mixed in with the ice cream, you don't really get the value of the cream anymore. It kind of gets lost in the over dairiness of it, but the cookie, is, the cookie crumbs themselves are great. Smarties, 4 out of 10 Blizzard. Now, you got to remember, this is Canada Smarties. So these are kind of like M&Ms, but flatter. All you really get to taste is the TV static that comes from the candy coating. The extra chocolate doesn't really do anything. I forget the third one we had. What did we have last time? What did we have last time? Oh, we had chocolate cookie dough. I, chocolate cookie dough, I thought it was going to go crazy, but I'm actually going to give it like a 5 out of 10 because I, the, the big balls of chocolate cookie dough were just like, they, it, it was just it, too much of a consistency change for me. I think I got to go straight with the, uh, I got to stick with the Reese's peanut butter cups, man. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard goes crazy. This is, by the way, I don't know if Dan's still here. This is what I mean when I tell people I'm 90s maxing. I'm, I'm done, man. I'm not booting up my smartphone in my own city and going, best ice cream in Vancouver, and then reading 50 ranks. So oh, this one's a 7.43 out of 10. And then this one's, a, they've got great gluten. We're going to the Dairy Queen. We're getting the snack size Blizzard. Maybe we're getting the Dilly Bar to take home or something like that. We're going through the drive-thru. We're parking on the street. It's all, it, it's, it's a new world out there in the sense that it's an old world out there. Now, listen, temporarily speaking, I think the pair is, is half decent and it's, it works nicely with Zany Joker because they'll both necessarily trigger if, if this one triggers. Streamer hates local businesses. I respect the local Dairy Queen franchisee. I don't think that we should discriminate against her just because she doesn't know how to make her own ice cream. She served a great function to the community by bringing a Dairy Queen into the, the place of commerce. I appreciate it. Yeah, but she doesn't get it. She didn't come up with her own Tahitian vanilla recipe. Are you listening to yourself? Are you being serious? Are you smoking crack right now? We're all on this blue marble together, okay? We gotta get along. I had a lady today move the grocery divider I'd put up because she didn't want it to be rung up, so it's just on my mind. Hot boy talk, speak on that. What are you talking about? I had a grocery run today where the lady moved the divider because she didn't want it to be rung up, so it's on my mind. What are you saying here? She thought she'd have to pay for the divider? Is that what, you, is that what you're saying? That's what she said. She thought the divider was going to charge her or something. <laughs> you know what? Give me the Jolly Joker for now. That's insane. Um, I mean, I guess at some point somebody had to pay for the divider. Don't get me wrong. She was old. Well, honestly, no disrespect to her, but in my opinion, that means that she should know better. She's had time to figure it out. I don't have a, a divider story like that from the grocery store. The, the only insane divider story that I can think of is um, when I was buying blueberries at the grocery store and then the lady in front of me finished checking out. It was all good. It was, it was all gravy. Um, the cashier took the divider and tried to throw it down the conveyor belt but it hit my carton of blueberries and caused it to pop open and then like all the blueberries spilled everywhere. And then she looked at me like, like, do you want some more blueberries? And I was like, yeah, that'd be nice. And then she called someone to like, go get the blueberries. It's not a big deal. I'm just like, I was kind of like, why did she do that? <laughs> the cashier probably has nightmares about it. I guess she thought she looked cool. I will say, though, you know, part of the ongoing series of, like, the fabric of society is eroded and nobody cares about anybody else anymore. Whatever happened to... to it, when I was growing up, it was, it was par for the course, bro. You, when your groceries were scanned, or when, when you loaded them all on the conveyor belt, you put the divider at the end. That way the other person doesn't have to put the divider up. 
Nowadays, nobody's putting the divider up anymore. They're loading the groceries onto the conveyor belt and then they're looking at their phone. If they're not talking on their phone, which is like 90% of people my age at the grocery store to begin with, you don't use self-checkout? I'm, I'm actually done with self-checkout. I think it's a scam. I think they sold it to us by appealing to the excellence of youth. Hey, you no longer have to wait uh, behind slow people in the checkout. You're so good at checking out, why don't you do it then? The problem is this, I am faster at scanning most of the time, but I would say like 20% of the time, the self-checkout thing just breaks and sounds an alarm. And then you've got to wait for the grocery store to send an employee over to your kiosk. And then like they only have three employees in the entire store because the person who owns the grocery store is trying to make as much money as possible. So it takes like 20 times longer to actually get checked out that's on you it's literally not like they just the self checkouts just have such a thin margin like if they put one extra pringle in the pringles can they're like you're trying to scan a flat screen instead of some sour cream and onion and i'm like brother what are you talking about here i'm just trying if i wanted to steal you don't even have a security guard i would just grab this shit and walk out I'm not, what, you think I'm trying to like hack the system at the Loblaws self-checkout? I would just put the shit in my pocket and walk through the front door. <laughs> like 30 people have done over the length of time that I've been in the store to begin with. This has never happened to me. Okay, congratulations, you're an Instacart diamond user. Out here in the real world, sometimes, you know, no plan survives contact with the enemy. I'm kind of, listen, here's my thing. I think... I'm really trying hard not to become just like a doomer and like, you know, capitalism is the root of all problems in society, okay? Because in the same way that you guys are like, I use the self-checkout all the time and it works for me, so it must be a problem on your end. Capitalism's been working out okay for me. But the more I go out into the world, I see the promise of new technology and new features, and I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. If you kept everything exactly the same and just added the technology, then it would be a dream come true. The problem is they add the self-checkout and for two years, they've got the same amount of staff and they've got the self-checkouts. And it's, you're feasting. It's like Netflix before every company made their own streaming service. But now, over this last several years, they go, oh, 40% of the people at the grocery store are using self-checkout. We're gonna downsize. We're only gonna have two cashiers operating eight lanes. 80% of people are using self-checkout. Now we're gonna have one cashier manning 12 lanes, you know? Like, and it just, it's now at the point where I'm like, I fucking wish that we just didn't have the self-checkouts and they just opened all 12 lanes of assisted checkouts. Now I'm like, it's a, it's a luxury checkout experience to just be able to pull my cart up load the stuff on and not have to worry about scanning it and the fucking area where you can actually put the shit on the scale is so small you gotta play like lego and jenga just to try to get it all to stand there and if something ever falls over uh unexpected item in bagging area the alarm goes off there's no like the the two staff that are working at the grocery store one of them is trying to check out seven people simultaneously the other one is manning the deli the olive bar the bakery section the cheese section like they're trying to run the entire 800,000 foot grocery store all by themselves we just we the, the problem is they they give us the technology and they go, isn't this sick technology? And you go, yeah, that's awesome. And then they put it in and they offload the work onto us. And then they fire like half the staff. And I'm like, this is way worse. It would have just been better if you just, you got like maybe two self checkout kiosks, but you got, you built eight lanes in the grocery store. Why, we, we only got two open at peak hours. Like, what are we doing? It doesn't make any sense to me. Why are we paying $44.90 a kilo for deli ham and there's nobody at the deli counter? It's a robot cutting the, the slices for me. Self-checkouts are just better though. You are a class trader. This is why, I'm just gonna say it, okay? For now, for, things can change over time. This is why Costco cooks. If they got 12 fucking lanes in the store, they got 12 cashiers and then they've got six self-checkouts that are also available. And they've got like three dedicated people in the self-checkout area that are like, go to this one, we'll help you. Beep, 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 Like they do it for you. The Costco checkout experience is a luxury. They get mad at you for putting your shit on the conveyor belt. 
Like you start loading small items on the conveyor, they're like, what the fuck are you doing, brother? Just give me the cart. Like it takes them less time to scan $400 worth of groceries than it does for you to get out your credit card. They, they're doing something right, okay? Costco is holding it down. The dream of the 90s is still alive in Kirkland. You can buy a hot dog and a soda for $1.50. You can get in a fist fight in the parking lot because there's only 3,000 spots available and 4,000 people are in the store at any given time. And the cashiers know what the hell they're doing. They're the last ones holding it down, brother. If Costco falls, it's all over. A note becomes a chord, becomes a phrase, becomes a melody. And a note becomes a monster. Everything here is alive. Spirit. <laughs>